hard inquiries, soft inquiries, combining inquiries, multi-browser tricks, shopping cart tricks, reconsideration lines, credit freezes. It's all a foreign language. Just tell me what I need to know about credit inquiries and how it affects my credit score. Credit inquiries only account for 10% of an overall credit score, but lenders are weighing their importance more heavily as hard inquiries are a good indication of financial stress, especially now in our current masked economy, massive furloughs, and rampant job layoffs. I'm Cap, and welcome to Screaming Lincoln's Consumer Credit Series. I've got four credit cards already and a car loan in my credit report. I'm ready to get some better credit cards that have better rewards and sign-up bonuses. How will credit inquiries prevent me from being approved if I put in the work and got my score up to 750 at this point? Do not underestimate the impact credit inquiries can have with getting approved. But every credit expert and blog says it will only affect my score, if at all, by up to five points. I'm not applying for a bunch of cards. What am I missing? The lender's perspective. How many times have you applied for credit over the past couple years? A few times for a few cards. And the auto loan? Oh yeah, that was just a few months ago for my new car. Gosh, 2020 seems so different in late spring than it did at the beginning of the year. Hard inquiries appear in your credit history when you apply for any type of credit. They remain for 24 months. Their effect on credit scores is minimal. After 12 months, the score is unaffected. That much is known. Credit issuers are focusing on hard inquiries now more than ever. It's common for lenders to use soft inquiries to glean at their customer's credit profile and become aware of any red flags. Applying for credit cards is one potential red flag. Keep in mind, the effect of hard inquiries on scores is minimal, but the effect on a lender's decision is a separate obstacle for consumers when they apply for credit. Everyone knows the importance of a great credit score. But the added obstacle of hard inquiries and the severity lenders have imposed on this factor has grown over the past decade. If we were in 2011, then the inquiry factor would not be as heavily weighed as it currently is by many lenders. Back then, you could open the same credit product over and over and score the same sign-up bonus every time. Credit card churning has blown up in popularity and is practiced by many more consumers today than it was back then. Lenders are aware of this and have modified whatever credit risk model they use to emphasize the importance of hard inquiries in their approval process. This extra emphasis extends beyond the usual 10% weighted factor for inquiries in new accounts that you see on every website about credit scores. Yeah, but I thought the effect hard inquiries have on credit scores is gone after just 12 months. So I should be okay because my cards were approved over a year ago, right? You missed my point about lenders analyzing the importance of hard inquiries. Technically, yes, your score will be okay because as you said, a year has passed since approval for the cards. But the inquiries remain for 24 months. At first glance, it appears you're in good shape because you have a great score. However, from the lender's perspective, they have to adapt their criteria for good credit candidates to extend beyond simply having a great score. This creates an extra barrier to entry for consumers that simply want to dip their toes into better credit rewards because those cards often have more stringent credit requirements, which include a higher score. Great. Sounds like a 750 score isn't enough. I remember your video on using authorized users to cheat your way to an 800 score where you said it was possible to still be denied despite having a great score. So what else can I do here? It may be possible to manipulate hard inquiries so lenders may never see them. I'm all ears, bro. Little help here. Some lenders are married to the same bureau for all credit applications like Barclays is with TransUnion. Some lenders will check with more than one bureau like Citibank can do with Equifax and TransUnion. Then there's Capital One, which runs the whole bureau gamut 
by ridiculously pulling info from all three bureaus for a single credit application. The U.S. state used to apply for credit can influence which bureau a lender uses, which is the case with cards issued by Chase. Lastly, be aware that some lenders may use different bureaus for business credit products compared to personal credit products like Bank of America and Citibank are known for. Sadly, you'll have to scour the interwebs to find this information. Here are some resourceful websites that can help. Check the comments on these sites as the authors don't always get around to updating the page with the most current information. So how do I change which bureau a lender checks with and why is this beneficial for me? I don't understand the upside here. Well, if you had a string of hard inquiries go through the same bureau over a 24 month span, then it would help to deflect the next hard inquiry to another bureau. Oh, I get it. Now I'm on board. How do I handle this? It's not easy because it can be time consuming. It will usually involve speaking to a live phone agent with the lender. First, freeze the bureau's credit report that you do not want the lender to see. Then call in using the lender's reconsideration line once the application generates a rejection letter on your end via U.S. mail or email. Feed the phone agent the reference number on the rejection letter and ask if they'll use another bureau to run a credit check. The reason I give for using another bureau to the agent over the phone is that I'm a victim of identity theft and the bureau I froze has unauthorized inquiries under dispute. It's not guaranteed to work, but building rapport and providing the right narrative can go a long way here. Meh, not sure that's for me, but it makes sense. Spread out hard inquiries whenever possible, so one bureau doesn't have a stockpile of inquiries, which is a red flag. Now I see why so many credit card churners hate Capital One. Last question. Can I get a hard inquiry removed if I'm denied on a credit application? Or maybe even get approved through a soft inquiry alone with no hard inquiry. That would be even better. Getting approved through a soft inquiry alone is rare. It's still possible, but very rare, especially now with lenders' stricter credit conditions. I do not advocate removing hard inquiries if you initiated them. I know it's possible, and some credit experts claim it to be very easy to have them removed via dispute. It's a matter of ethics for me, and the gray area is too dark to venture into, although some consumers have no moral issue disputing hard inquiries they've initiated. This dispute activity can create red flag situations with some lenders and result in drastic actions like account closures in some cases. For me, it's not worth the risk, so I simply don't engage in disputes unless I know they were not authorized. In summary, having a great credit score in 2020 does not mean an automatic approval. The credit card churning community, along with the looming economic recession, has raised the bar on approval standards. Lenders are implementing stricter rules beyond what FICO's algorithm provides. Keeping hard inquiries to a minimum is a helpful strategy to increase your chances of approval. I've gone over one option which can change which bureau a lender uses to check your credit history. I provided some additional information and resources to get you started as well. Keep watching the Screaming Lincolns channel to stay updated on other credit strategies you can use to maintain your score with a possibly deep recession looming over the next year or two as we adjust to our new normal. Do you have any questions on inquiries? What's your inquiry picture look like? Let me know if I can help in the comments anytime. What are you waiting for? Hit it, Steve.